Hi everybody, my name is Scott Walls. For over 25 years, I've deployed ERP applications for some of the world's largest organizations. During that time, I've taught thousands of people just like you how to discover, use, deploy, and support Oracle's back office applications. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you what contract terms are, the different types of terms, as well as when they are created, how they are created, and by whom. Please note that this lesson is part of the Contract Terms Library course found under the Contract Management area of the Discover menus. But before we get started, did you know that you could earn free Discovery badges for display on your LinkedIn profile just by watching videos like this one? You can. Stay until the end of this video and I'll show you how. Okay, so let's get started. Key topics for this lesson are as follows. What are contract terms? contract terms types, when are contract terms created, how are contract terms created, who creates them, and how do terms link to compliance. First topic, what are contract terms? Structured contracts are comprised of terms and conditions. In Fusion, Oracle Cloud, those terms and conditions are called clauses. Clauses are generally grouped into sections. Sections and or clauses are defined on terms templates. Think of the templates to correspond something similar to when you pull a template, a word template from let's say a share drive. Simplified contracts, as well as externally authored, remember supplier paper I talked about in the contracts overview, do not have individual terms. They are viewed by Oracle Cloud as one object. This makes them lighter but creates issues when authoring, researching, and amending. It also, essentially what it means is you either have to spend the time to get the detail of clause lines, and then you can bounce them up against risk, report on them, have a lot more detail in your contracts, or contracts are just viewed as a template, and you can see the template, and you might be able to search the text but you have less flexibility because it's just viewed as one object. Contract terms types. So let's talk quickly just about two terms. We have the template types, remember structured or simplified, we just talked about those, and you have the different types of terms. Sections beget clauses and clauses beget compliance deliverables. Third topic, when are terms created? So in short, terms can be created in advance. You can set up all the terms. You can move them into terms templates. You can collect that or connect them with deliverables. You can do all of that before you author, or you can actually create terms or amend existing during authoring. You see that there on the right. Notice you see the diamond next to the 2.1 compliance with laws showing you that that particular term has non-standard and I've added or amended it. How are terms created? Well, in short, clauses, sections, rules to questions to constants or variables, templates, and deliverables, they are all rolled up to be terms. In short, they're really mostly rolled up to be on a terms template. There's that word again. Next, who creates terms? Well, most often it's the terms librarian. What we typically see is that there's some confusion on implementations. That can be the embedded legal inside of procurement called the contract admin. But most often that's a legal representative, somebody who understands the legal language. The challenge typically is how to get them from a manner management application, such as Passport or something that lawyers are typically very familiar with, to creating, editing, and auditing terms inside Fusion. So there's a couple different ways to do that. They can either have a tight relationship with a contract admin or actually create or manage the terms themselves inside of Fusion, or potentially you could look at importing those terms as well. So how do terms link to compliance? So we really think there's three types of terms. You can either deny something, affirm it, or just state. And so denying something is why you sign the contract. You can't present a counterfactual. But when you assert something or define it, you may put a deliverable. Let me give you an example. So I'm going to say that anytime we're going to make a change to this project, 
we have to fill out this particular change management form. That's a case where I could put the deliverable, I could have you acknowledge it, I could even put a copy of the form, and that be could become a deliverable, an external deliverable that the supplier is supposed to do as part of execution plus 30 days, let's say. I could also have contract the obligation, I could have a shutdown process, and I could have internal resources responsible for providing deliverables on the performance against the contract, etc. So deliverables are just ways to link compliance tasks to a contract. You can do that directly, you can do it on the fly, or you can even, as you see here, link the deliverables to the different terms. Okay. So that's it for procurement contract terms. So we really wanna know, I think you should know now the what, when, how, and who of contract terms creation, the types and examples, and also how terms link to compliance. If you're not quite sure, watch it again, it's free. If you do understand, great. It's time to move on to the next video in the course. So that's it for this presentation, but hopefully not it for your learning journey. There are thousands of free videos just like this one. Remember, better content, better skills, better income, better life. We want to help you get 1% better every day. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Okay, as promised, here are the five steps you can perform today to start earning free badges for your LinkedIn profile. Step one, navigate to panamir.com and either sign in or join now, it's free. Step two, in the upper left, under the Discover menu, select the course that you want to watch and get badged for. Step three, watch all of the different video lessons in that course. Step four, when it's complete, send your LinkedIn profile and the course you watched and your user ID to badges at panamir.com. And then sit back and wait for step five when we attach a badge to your LinkedIn profile.